Nana, I will start with you because otherwise you'll be in the office later and you'll shout at me. So I'll start with you, Nana. Look, do you think that we need these diversity targets? Are they counterproductive? Well, look, in my own experience, OK, so I'll go back to my father. He came here in the 60s. He became head of credit at West Markets. There were no diversity and inclusion targets and he made it. I find it extremely counterproductive because I've been on the reading end of it when they have reached their quota. So, for example, I literally would have to wait for somebody who's black to die or leave post before I would actually get an opportunity. And one of my first uh, opportunities uh, in radio, uh, I was offered a post and it was to do the black show because they had a quota instead of a mainline post that I could more than handle because I had plenty of experience. In my view, this is counterproductive and it goes against the whole narrative and concept of judging someone based on the content of their character rather than the colour of their skin. And, and that is what we're pushing to people. Why can mm. we not get to a position we weren't aware we are judging people on their ability? Forget the colour. OK, Leroy, uh, you've heard what Nana has had to say there. Your views? Well, I think we need to acknowledge that there's always been um, systemic failures and um, all sorts of disproportionalities. That's stopping people from going into organisations and actually not only staying, but achieving their true potential. Now, from what I can see, there is an acknowledgement that there are these failures and they need to address them. And not by positive discrimination, because that's illegal. It's positive action, which means they're trying to dismantle the barriers. They're trying to make it a level playing field and everyone is judged on their merits because they know that an organization that is more diverse um, is there is a human, moral and business case to them being more effective. Mm -hmm. um, we saw that with the McPherson inquiry, there were recommendations on recruitment, change and progression. And those targets are there to help the organization to change the culture, break down the barriers and as a form of aspiration to be more reflective of the public. Can I, now, yeah, can I, can I just ask Leroy, can I just ask Leroy, and then I'll throw it back over to Nana, but Leroy, just staying with you for a second, what about, is there such a thing, dare I say, as over-representation? So if apparently 3.3% of the England and Wales population is black, and then the Treasury wants 6%, I mean, how does that work? Well, it has to be bespoke to the local area. It's just like some force areas across the country are well below their figure. But nationally, you would think it's, it's a much better um, proportion of black officers in the police service as a whole. So it has to be bespoke to their borough or their county or constabulary. So I, I would like to think it's not just this bland figure right across the board, but bespoke. So if you're in Leicester, you will have more um, Asian um, and African Caribbean people than if you're, say, in Leeds. So it has to be Why? sensitive to the context mm. of the okay. area and trying to be reflective of that. All right. Now, now I can see your itching to get involved. Go on. Yeah, but, but why? Can they do the job? A, can they do the job properly? Uh, B, you know, what is their character? Will it fit in with the office environment? And, and C, you know, are, are they the right person for the job? If you're starting on the premise that are they the right colour, then that is, re that is almost a... I'm not saying that. I am not saying that. Uh, that is not what I'm saying. I said everyone's judged on their merits. All you're trying well, to but, do but, is to ensure let, that everyone's let, on a level playing field. And then everyone... OK, Leroy. OK, okay Leroy. I get what you're but, saying. But, Nana, go on. But how can they be on a level playing field if you've already decided that if you've got your quota of white people, now you need the black person, then they're not on a level playing field at all. It's a contradiction in terms. And can I ask, Nana, can I ask Nana as well, can I ask, is it sometimes counterproductive? Because... Uh, you know, I would hope this is never the case, but I'm, I'm absolutely certain it is the case where some people will, yeah. if you know there's a quota system in your office, right, yeah. and, you know, it can easily lead, actually, arguably, maybe, even to a bit more racism, go, oh, she only got the job, or he only got the job because they're whatever, you know, and, and that's not good, is they, it? They've always had that. Well, I get, can I just well, say, I get that? One second, no, we'll just go, sorry, I'll go to Nana and then Leroy. Nana, go on. Listen, I get that all the time. When I started at GB News, it was like, oh, they just got their black person. Forget the 30 years of broadcast experience that I've had. It was because I'm black that I got the job. And, and that is very counterproductive. And on the other side of it, once they've got their quota, then you'll never get in. And I've been on that side too. So on one organisation, they had their black person. I went for an interview there. They said, oh, no, it's political. And what they were saying was they've got their black person. And I literally would have to wait for that person to either die or move on until I get the until I could actually go for that job. And you will. There was a time when you would never see.
two black people on TV at the same time because that just wasn't done. Okay. It was all about quotas. Yeah. Leroy, over to you. Can I, can, I, can I say that we're not talking about TV here, just widen the scope here now, right? I have one. We know it's very in-house and very close shot. So that we're talking about public services, wider organisations, corporate, etc., and they have a but, larger scope of people they can apply from. And also the fact that you are getting uh, confused about quotas. It is illegal. Positive discrimination is illegal. So people are judging their merits. And if they're not good enough, they will be put to one side and get someone who can do that. So it's a dynamic situation. And it's not just static, as you know, in the media. So please dispense <laughs> well, I, I, I tell, and understand. I, I, okay, so I tell you, I'm sorry. I'm just more reflective I'm just stop organization. Okay, okay, okay you're making a more sorry. reflective sorry. community. Leroy. There's an Leroy. inextricable link Leroy. Leroy. between having a I've, diverse I've public and a diverse personnel. Okay, Leroy. Uh, Le Leroy, together. Leroy, you're making the assumption that I've only worked in media. That is not the case at all. I, I worked on in many different right. things. Right. Well, okay. yeah, you did, because you said that I'm talking about TV. I'm not. I'm giving you examples of where this so-called affirmative or positive discrimination or whatever it is that you want to call it hasn't worked and has been counterproductive for me. And that is in my experience on yeah. many different levels.